Since our ancient ancestors flopped onto the land so many millions of years ago, we've steadily evolved, constantly developing, improving, and leading us to this very moment. Millions of years of fine-tuned evolution has finally paid off as we're able to compete in my $10,000 speedrun challenges. And my most recent one was the most challenging for our species yet. Thanks to this, I've finally pushed us to reach the apotheosis of evolution itself. This is the world record history of Exodus from the Earth, the most recent $10,000 speedrun challenge that I put out into the wild. It is so goddamn easy. Just get in, just get in. No fucking way. This game's similar to Crisis, yeah, you could say that. It's a real gem from its era. I'm sure I don't even need to explain what Exodus from the Earth is, one of the biggest games of all time. It came to the US in 2008 and blessed all of our home computers with its glory. 2008 is only a year after Halo 3 came out and I can still remember the conundrum of should I buy Halo 3 or fucking Exodus from the Earth. Yeah, they say Crisby's taken over all companies producing tan lotion. I don't know why he did it. I, of course I'm exaggerating, I'm kidding around. The game is a hidden gem that I'm pretty sure me and only like 10 other people in the world have played. It came out originally in Russia in 2007, but didn't come to the States till 08. The plot is centered around the Earth being in trouble in the year 2016, that fucking far future dystopian year. In 2016, the sun becomes a red giant, which is burning all the life on the planet to a crisp. And the solution is to find a habitable planet. So in a panic, they spec all of their points into space exploration to try and quickly find a habitable Earth-like planet. And meanwhile, the Axe Corporation develops a vaccine they claim will allow humans to live in hostile environments. The purpose being, you can take this vaccine and then live in a previously uninhabitable planet that they've discovered. But, suspicion starts to arise because its sinister leader, Jack Crisby, and Axe Corporation itself, are suspected of being behind the disappearance of an astronaut who had just returned from space with news of a second Earth. I, I, I know, and we're only halfway through the plot right now, your toes are probably curling in euphoria with how great the narrative is. So, ye, they get investigated, and you play as that undercover agent, Frank Rickson. Typical tough guy with a stock of one-liners and an almost fetishistic love of firearms. I didn't write that line, this is in the official summary of the game, because I wanted to see what they had to say about good old fucking Frank here. And so, you play as Frank Rickson, he's investigating, and it turns into an absolute goddamn bloodbath. Uh, people getting slaughtered all over the place as you're trying to uh, investigate and take down Jack Crisby and the gang. Honestly, this is work that rivals Tolkien's narratives. I mean, now that you're all brought up to speed on this riveting plot, uh, I'd like to explain how I even found this game. It was during a Steam summer sale like six or seven years ago now. It was like five cents, and I thought it looked interesting enough for a few pennies, so I bought it, and I made two YouTube videos on it, and I actually enjoyed it and had fun with it. So I thought this would be a good target for the next $10,000 speedrun challenge following the completion of my last one, Amok Runner, which I already made this Summoning Salt style video for last month. Now, this game was very different from Amok Runner in the fact that there's more to do, there's more mechanics, as opposed to Amok Runner where the only thing you can do is slowly walk forward while your character monologues about how unprofessional he's being. This game is actually just kind of fun. It's very Half-Life-esque is how I always think of it and how I describe it. And the speedrun is beyond exciting. And another great thing about this one for the challenge was there was already a template to follow. Because on day zero, there was already a speedrun record that had taken place in 2018. There was only one person that ever ran this game before this challenge. His name is Deluxe. Deluxe in 2018 had actually optimized an extremely impressive speedrun route for this game. Deluxe is really the patient zero for Exodus from the Earth speedrunning. So let's take a look. The first record from Deluxe was set on February 7th of 2018 with a 1 hour, 32 minute, 20 second speedrun. And it's actually pretty impressive, it's not just playing the game normally fast, 
Deluxe had already found some pretty big skips, and some skips that got used all the way up until the end of the challenge, especially in the early early levels. Like, th there was just an incredible amount of polish to the speed run that Deluxe was cooking up. The second record that Deluxe posted was on April 9th of 2018 with a 1 hour, 20 minute, 20 second speed run, so already improved it by 12 minutes, finding even more optimizations. And I'd like to briefly go over some of the tricks that he started using. So he had found a trash can skip where you would use a trash can as kind of like a prop boost in order to skip some parts of the level. He'd also then use an explosion skip. as well as an early car out of bounds. Finding out of bounds this early while being the only runner is extremely impressive because he wasn't competing with anyone. He was just doing this for the fucking love of the sport. An absolute madman. And his work is the foundation for the speed run itself. So finding it out of bounds already with the car is fantastic since the car is by far the biggest headache in the entire run. He then also found a gate skip. satellite skip, and a lot of other very small optimizations like quick save spamming, cutscene skips, save loading, like there was a lot that he used that was used all the way up till the end. So throughout 2018 he competed with just himself setting his own records. So the third record that he set was on April 29th of 2018 getting a 1 hour 18 minute 8 second run, then that same day getting a 1 hour 13 minute 33 second run. And then the following month in May, May 15th, 2018, he posts his last and final Exodus from the Earth speedrun record with a 1 hour, 10 minute, 13 second run. Overall, it was an extremely impressive run considering it was just him running it. So he was doing all of this on his own. And he kept theorycrafting big skips, including the biggest skip the game would ever see. The Chapter 13 skip. This was a skip that would happen at the very beginning of this run that would skip from the fucking very start, like the primordial ooze of Exodus from the Earth, all the way to chapter 13, using an out of bounds clip. He theorized it, but couldn't quite crack the code on how to make it all work. But he laid that groundwork where people did eventually find that. And I'll get into it in a moment. I want to follow the timeline one to one. Point is, Deluxe was an absolute pioneer with this game. So, having that as the template for day zero, I posted the $10,000 challenge, and people got to work. This is a much larger game than Amok Runner. Playing this game normally is going to take quite a few hours, and there is a lot going on. It's very action-heavy, a lot of shooting. The driving is unforgiving because it feels like you're driving an absolute fucking disheveled, drunken zombie of a car. It doesn't do what you want it to do. Its momentum carries in weird ways, it gets pushed around by light breezes, it's fucking miserable. So there is a lot of learning that needed to go into this game. And that's really what day one was about. Most players spent day one just playing the game normally as best they can, getting familiar with the shooting mechanics and all of that, getting familiar with the route which was already established. But we did however see a new record on day one itself from a familiar face that you're going to recognize from the AMOC challenge, Spicy TV. Spicy TV within 24 hours after the announcement actually did get a new world record with a 56 minute and 8 second run. There wasn't any huge changes to the route, Spicy TV just did the established route better, but with some new tricks thrown in sprinkled here and there for flavor, but nothing massive. I'll go over a couple of the day one tricks that were found. The first and by far most entertaining trick is crouch spamming. People discovered that if you just spam crouch, none of the enemies can actually do damage to you. You're pretty much immortal when you're spamming crouch and getting shot by enemies, everything misses. It's extremely goofy, and I love it. I think it's amazing. So that saved a lot of time because you could just start avoiding enemies or surviving things that ordinarily you wouldn't survive because even on like <laughs> the best of days, the game is pretty unforgiving with the amount of damage it'll do to you out of nowhere. Like, you'll step on, like, a single twig and break your whole leg, die instantly. Like, you will just die 
like instantaneously, like spontaneously can bust out of nowhere in this game. So being able to crouch spam to avoid a couple bullets that might have just instantly killed you for some reason was a lifesaver and an absolute game changer. So that was discovered pretty quickly. Another skip that was discovered on day one was TIG skip, named after the person that found it, TIG. They found if you pressed control plus I, you'd teleport forward. It was a developer command that was left in the game, but it only worked on one specific level. So you couldn't just spam it for everything, but it was helpful in the spot that it worked. They also found a raft and conveyor skip. It was found by Zumo D. Papaya. They found that in the same car cutscene skip, if you exit and enter the vehicle as you enter the water, and then drive to the left of the mountain and maneuver back in bounds, you can skip the long auto-scroller. So this level fucking sucks. There is an auto-scrolling segment here, and being able to skip it would be a huge time saver. A, a massive one, and just it cut out a lot of boring shit. And luckily it was found pretty much instantly. So, if you enter and exit the vehicle right as it touches the water here, you can then drive to the left of the mountain out of bounds and then get back in bounds to skip all of that dog shit. And now we move on to day two, which by far had the most craziness happen. So I mentioned that chapter 13 skip that Deluxe had theorized, right? Well, the community was hard at work on trying to make that dream a reality. They worked tirelessly on trying to crack that. This is the C-13 uh, sequence break in Exodus from the Earth. I'm so what is going on? Today I'll be teaching you chapter 13 skip. This is going to be the new chapter 13 skip or 13.5. Because if you could do that chapter 13 skip, you would cut about 20 minutes out of this run. So this one trick would nearly cut this run in half on its own. So the community was working together, it was a collaborative effort, but was ultimately put all together into this nice cauldron of beautiful tasty stew by on trigger on trigger put all of the methods together and figured out the way of making it work so to break it down the first method was to make a save on the elevator and then use a chair to clip upwards into the ceiling and fall down which would skip right to chapter 13. this was a combination of albert hammock discovering item prop climbing up the hand in the center of the room this is the first major trick used in the run you go grab a chair, you turn it a certain way, and then you use it to surf up this hand in the middle of the room to get to the second story. And then Vexidros found a momentum carry through saves, where moving objects carry weird momentum for your character. So what you would do is you would then get into this elevator and basically store a lot of momentum from moving the objects in there, and it would then use that to clip into the ceiling and fall down to skip to chapter 13. This was in its infancy, so these were the early days of chapter 13 skip, so a lot of people didn't understand exactly how it worked, so it led to a lot of people struggling with it when clipping out of bounds and all that. So it was kind of deemed too RNG right now to be run viable, but it was there, it was discovered, and later that same day, a lot of records started, started to happen. People started to gamble on chapter 13 skip because there wasn't a reason not to. This isn't a trick that comes in towards the end of the run where the pressure's on and if you fuck it up you have to reset the whole thing and go all the way back. This is something that takes place at the actual very beginning of the game. So it's only like a minute into the run so a lot of people just decided even though we don't fully understand it or have the most consistent setup it's worth at least trying it. And it only got more consistent as the runs went on. But day two saw a lot of shaking and baking. So we had our first world record using the chapter 13 skip. It came from Joe Gnome with a 53 minute 59 second run. It's not the most optimized run in the world, but god damn it, it's the first one that clocked it with the chapter 13 skip. And then we had an absolute flurry of world records being traded. These were all within five minutes of each other. There were three records. First, came from Joe Gnome again with a 50 minute 8 second run. Alright, we know the strat. Well, we know a strat. We don't know the strat. 50 And then, we have a returning raid boss, the previous world champion of the $10,000 speedrun bounties, Ouija. Ouija was the winner of last month's AMOC Runner $10,000 challenge, and he came back to defend the title. So Ouija made his presence known by clocking in a 48 minute, 41 second run. Do I go? Wow, what a great run. Which was then absolutely fucking demolished by Spicy TV, 
who came around and fucking slapped the meat down, laying in a 38 minute, six second run. Not bad for a first run with the fucking chair skip shit. This run was actually spectacular. This early into the competition, the record had already been chopped almost <laughs> in half from an hour to 38 minutes. So Spicy definitely had the most optimized run at the time, implemented all the tricks pretty much flawlessly and just had the most mechanical expertise with it so far. So day two, he was really kind of popping off. He then an hour later got another world record, dropping it even further with a 35 minute, 35 second run. I lost time even though I didn't down robots because of that. GG's though, two in a row, not bad. This one was definitely a lot better than the last one. Like the skips were, were pretty decent in this one. But now we need to clear the stage for yet another galactic demon level threat of speedrunning, Unity B. Unity is a top tier source speedrunner. He is very well known in the scene. This man was basically fucking created in a test tube in a lab, combined all of the genes of the best speedrunners of all time and put into one person, rolled up into a fucking monstrous package. Unity B came in after practicing the run for, I don't even remember how long, but he wasn't at it for very long, came in and got a 33 hour, 12 second world record. He also started incorporating bunny hopping into the speed run. Bunny hopping is a term I'm sure you're very familiar with. It's optimized movement. When you do bunny hopping correctly, you move faster than any other ways of traversing. So the way you bunny hop in Exodus from the Earth is you strafe left to right. It, it's no different than most other bunny hopping. It just looks a little wonky in Exodus from the Earth, but it's fundamentally the same thing. You're, you're strafing left, right, you know, holding DA, holding A, all that. If you know bunny hopping and other source games, you know it in Exodus. It just looks very silly in this one, in my opinion, but I think that adds to the charm. We're only 48 hours into this son of a bitch, and it's already getting scarily optimized. You have people bunny hopping, spamming crouch to avoid damage, grabbing props to jump over triggers and skips, going through entire fucking chapters, skips, doing crazy shit. It is a beautiful sight to behold. And day three, they decided to tackle another issue entirely. Shut the fuck up! The performance. The game has performance problems, in specific, a memory leak issue. And that was a big pain point for a lot of people because sometimes the game would just straight up crash. And people within the community actually developed a speedrun patch to fix it. So it would stop it from crashing due to a memory overload in the later half of the game. What would happen is during one part of the run, there was a point where you'd kill enemies and it would overload the memory of the game and cause it to just completely shit itself. Which is disastrous for a speedrun, especially a $10,000 competition speedrun. So the community worked together to actually patch this and fix it. There's a lot of credit to give for this one. The main contributors, as I understand it, are Zack777, another returning face from the AMOC challenge from last month, one of the top runners there. Egg and Banana Stan, they all narrowed down on the issue. And then Sky Rimfist created the patch, and Magma Slime 569, Sizable Shrimp, and Man in Black tested it. And there were also other contributors as well, such as like Artemis. Uh, th there was just a lot of people that came together to fix this in order to make this better, uh, the experience better, so that way people weren't having these fucking crashes and ruining the run. So, the patch comes out day three. We, of course, allow for the patch because obviously I don't want this to be just some like RNG crash fest. Like, that sucks. I understand that it's not as the game shipped, but you know what, fuck it, you know, it's our competition, we, we can get a little wacky and goofy, a little loosey-goosey with the rules. Yes, it is a third-party thing because it's a patch, but it just fixes the base game itself because it's shipped in such a poor state. So, we allow the patch for the runners to play on it, uh, after the community rejoices and everyone gets back to running. So, now, let's talk about the next couple of days. Days 3 through 5. Unity gets yet another world record with a 31 minute, 1 second run. Dude, what is this? Actual kickflip, kickflip, fucking burnout paradise bower roll. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Dude. So close to 30. This uses a lot of new skips now. So we've introduced something called Dam Skip, which was found by Zach, based on what we've learned from that. So it gets pretty close to the roof. If we, if we could like pinch through here, we would end up in this room. Uh, this room is basically the end, right? We would then just 
go through here, call the elevator, or let this guy do it, take the elevator down, and that's basically the entire level. So the idea was you would clip through this ceiling on top of this car, which would skip the entire dam section. This run also included the new wet skip, which was found by Latanda. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to drive across this trigger, so if you were to reload, then you would respawn on the island. Um, admittedly, I don't know exactly where this trigger is still, but it seems to be somewhere around here. Um, after that, we're not going to respawn on the island. We're instead going to basically drive around the entire island. Uh, but this method... Um, drives essentially right to the end, and then you utilize the fact that you respawn right in the crane to do the crane task, and then your quick save puts you right back in the end. This combined the crane skip and the conveyor and raft skip. Uh, the crane skip, I'll briefly explain, was you would launch your car right at this crane and try and basically fucking front flip over it or even off to the side and you would skip a good portion of this run. Uh, just more of a headache, it's just another optimized time save. The crane skip was also extremely frustrating for a lot of people, but necessary. The wet skip combines both that and the conveyor and raft skip, so what you would do is you would drive out of bounds, you would hit some of the triggers, and then you would reset the car's position to teleport inbounds. Then you would do the crane skip and load the previous save when you hit the trigger to then reset the car. And because of the way the trigger checkpoints work, resetting the car position with the crane checkpoint warps you forward, skipping a lot of the driving. So the wet skip was just another huge time save and just this amalgamation of a couple of other skips that came before it and combined it into something even better. Another new skip was being used called Brownie Skip, which was found by Controlled Alt Delicious. This is one that was theorized all the way back in the beginning of time by Deluxe, the Prophet. And basically it's some tricky platforming to get out of bounds and then you jump down to the next section and live by dropping your frame rate by switching it to a lower value or mashing quick save or you can just get lucky and jump at the frame perfect time. This was just another nice optimized time skip by abusing the quick save mechanic. So if you're mashing quick save, you can pretty much live most things when it comes to like dropping down and shit. There's just a lot of goofiness to the tech here. So these were three new skips that were being experimented with, implemented into runs, and it got the time down even further. Spicy got a 30 minute 43 second run and this I honestly think was a work of beauty. I I watched the majority of this one live. How hard is the run? It's like a solid seven maybe. It's not the hardest run in the world but it's pretty technical. That was so fucking slow. Whatever. Uh, it's still record. That was so bad, though. Fuck, man. I don't even know what I could have done for that. Even if that was fine, this still wasn't sub 30, but... Later on, Unity got a 29 minute, 7 second run. Our first sub 30. And I hope it doesn't, because this is like the perfect mix of... Like, you actually have to know how to do it, and also not just full 1 billion percent randomness. Fuck off! Let's fucking go! <laughs> that was so close to sub 29, what the fuck? I didn't think I could go that much lower. <laughs> Cracking the sub 30 milestone. Something that, in the beginning, I'll be honest, I wasn't even sure was possible. This was an hour long run. And I was wondering if it was already so optimized, we might not see any huge improvements. Maybe it'd get down to like 40 minutes. But we're already deep in the sub 30s, baby. We're fucking exploring parts unknown. So Unity gets the first sub 30, 29 minutes, 7 seconds. Unity then comes back and beats his own record with a 28 minute, 29 second run. And then we get another Titan into the fray, another behemoth into the scene, Mewtie. Mewtie is another very well-established speedrunner who entered this competition and made his presence felt in a big way. His spiritual pressure was crumpling people. But unfortunately, his big run at this time was 0.1 second slower than Unity's world record. Mewtie got a 28 minute, 29 second run, but I thought it was worth mentioning here because this is the first time Mewtie got himself in contention for the number one spot, but it would be far from the last. GG. Oh, Not bad. Not a bad run. Whatever. <clears throat> G 
two seconds behind. Now, let's go ahead and start talking about day six. Day six starts using something called the Chunka Warp. The Chunka Warp lets you skip an entire stair section, and it's done by hitting the cutscene to start the chapter, and then getting to the end of the mission by resetting your position to the start of the game by loading a save that's there. You're gonna notice a lot of these tricks use a lot of quick saving and even save load tricks because there is so much jank to this game that you can really get some crazy results with these save loads. So, after loading that save that's there, the old version had you die in the cutscene by using a grenade launcher shot into the trigger. And then loading the last possible quick save that you make, which is a black screen, and if you do all of this correctly, you can just walk to the end of the mission. Mewtie gets a world record at 27 minutes 56 seconds and uses this version of the Chunk of War. I am idiot. Fuck. Could have been quicker. Whatever. We'll get better at this. Ooh. No, we didn't. Okay. Fine. Oh, yeah, Fresh meat. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking time loss. <laughs> the grenade. <laughs> However, this was improved later. The final version of the trick, the prime version, used the upclip method, which is of course momentum carrying that we talked about earlier. So you would upclip and then you jump below the cutscene trigger to die from fall damage, and then you'd skip the cutscene by mashing quick save as you die, load the black screen to quick save and continue and you basically get the same effect, but it's more consistent and it's a lot easier. So all versions from Unity's 26 minute, 57 second record does this. We finish this run now for splits. Yeah, I should. I mean, if this game, if this run, like, if I lose like a minute and a half, I'm not gonna fucking finish it, but we'll see. I got just naded himself. That guy's helping me out. Sub 27, let's fucking go. That could have been so much better, man. That could have been nearly sub-26. These warps became integral to the run. You're going to notice quite a few of them, and they do get a little confusing. I don't know if my explanation has done it justice, but hopefully by watching it, as well as my little fucking <laughs> reptile smooth brain understanding of it, hopefully that's enough to get across how it works. So now we're coming up on a week since the competition started. Really day seven through 10 saw even more glitches and tricks being discovered to continue pushing this into just absolutely outrageous territory. So we have something called the Subalines Wormhole. So my goal is to make sure that the moment I enter the vehicle, it will load me like that. Okay, so if you see it load instantly, that is it worked now i think if i hit reset right now make sure it grabs a checkpoint here subulines wormhole hopefully i didn't fuck your name up so this wormhole works by entering the car and loading into the next section of the game at the same time you can cause a wormhole glitch with the car's reset function the reset function is something i've mentioned already but i'll briefly explain a little bit more the game has a built-in reset so you can cause a wormhole glitch by abusing that mechanic the game will keep teleporting you ahead when you reach a certain point by loading a save with the car in the resetting position state. To do this right, you have to enter the next area, reset your car's position, and then make a save. Then you drive to a certain point, load the save, and you'll teleport forward. Repeat this all the way to the dam and you save almost a minute of driving time. And at this point, a minute means the world. Mickey R clocked a 26 minute 41 second run and was the first person to use the wormhole and all the future runs will also be using it but Mickey was the first one to put it all together and get a great fucking run out of it. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, no fucking way. Oh my god. Another trick that started being implemented was called Dirt Skip. Basically, Dirt Skip is letting you save a key card that would normally be used, and it saves roughly 20 seconds, which, again, at this point, is huge. This is a game of inches now. These seconds mean everything. So you pull this off by dropping onto this dirt block, 
making a save, and then making a save next to another block of dirt at the correct time. You then load the previous save and quick load and press quick save twice quickly. And if you do it correctly, you'll warp into the end area and sometimes you can even jump inside as well if you didn't get teleported directly in. And we're only getting started with the glitches and tricks here. I hope you brought an appetite, because if you like glitches and tricks, you're eating fucking good with Exodus from the Earth here. I wasn't exaggerating. Nearly every millisecond of this run has a trick or is setting up for a trick. So the next one is the reactor up clip, and it actually uses and builds upon the same mechanics as the chapter 13 skip with the chair and using the elevator and making a quick save. So. You use the chair, use the elevator, make a quick save, keep your momentum, and then you can use a trash can to boost yourself into the ceiling into the next section of the game. So now let's talk about some of the world records that were obtained using some of these already. We had Unity getting a 25 minute 49 second run. We had Unity getting a 25 minute 18 second run. Fuck. <laughs> We had Unity getting a 24 minute 40 second run. Come on, 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 come on. Let's fucking go, dude. <laughs> oh! I'm coming. <laughs> That's massive. G fucking G. I think you're starting to notice a pattern. Unity's out there playing patty cake with his own world records right now. And these runs are beautiful. I mean, just look at how these are going. But it wasn't just Unity, there were still so many other talented runners that weren't far behind and in fact, even leaped ahead. We had Zack, yes, Zack, with a 24 minute 38 second speedrun squeaking out a stinker to get the world record here from Unity. And then we also had some new implementations with prop surfing. So towards the end of the game, you can use a box to help you drop through a depth barrier instead of warping around the stairs, and it saves quite a bit of time. It's like 20 seconds, but it's not easy, and the box can easily break, so it's kind of a risky thing to do, but the time save is always worth the risk, especially when it's this cutthroat towards the top of the leaderboard with this competition. Unity, later on that day, was the first one to use that, the prop surfing in a run, and he got a world record with it, with a 23 minute, 51 second run. He's coming, by the way. Sub 24? Let me go! Do I do the optimization? I'm gonna do the name boost. <laughs> no! <laughs> Fuck! Oh, I got a auto split. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh my god. And then uh, continued to go on an absolute fucking rampage here. He then got a 23 minute 39 second run. That's so disappointing, man. A 23 minute 14 second run. I forgot to do the fucking optimization. <sighs> a 23 minute 10 second run. And then finished off that day with a 22 minute 57 second run. So now we're 11 days into the competition and we're still not done finding and using huge tricks. So Mars skip was found and this one is such an absolute cluster fuck of a trick. This combines like everything all together, everything ever learned throughout the entire history of the human race. 
gets combined into this fucking skip, basically. I guess not the skip so much, but really the whole level of Mars is such a wild experience to watch. Because there's so much going on all the time. Even outside of what I'm about to talk about with the box launches, there's just some really precise jumps that need to be done, as well as like enemies that they fight through that could just instantly kill you sometimes for no fucking reason. But like there's a jump you have to make off of a plant sphincter, like there's this little anus plant that you have to do a pretty tight jump on that actually becomes a run killer for quite a few great runs. Like there's just nothing easy about it, it is just unforgiving. But let's talk about the Mars skip using the boxes. So this uses very similar tech to the elevator skips, it's carrying over momentum and uses that to launch you. And you can launch extremely far by using the boxes on Mars. So what you do is you use grenades to prevent the boxes from opening, and you detonate them at the right time to give you a huge launch, kind of like the elevator skips. So you can use either remote grenades or pressing them as you load a save that you made on the box, or just blow them up by using your grenade launcher. It's just there's quite a few ways of doing it, but they're all pretty fucking tough. Unity's the first one to use them in a good run. He gets a 22 minute 53 second record with it and once again is trailblazing this path. There's also another thing that gets discovered called propless. So this is kind of similar to something we talked about but without a prop. So instead of using a box to skip that death barrier we talked about a moment ago, you jump on the wall and time your frame limiter correctly to take much less fall damage. And if you do it correctly, you can just drop to the bottom without carrying a box and this is just kind of a different way of doing the same thing. Since the box could break and it'd be like this giant fuck you moment, this is just another option. It's just a little bit more difficult. So now let's dive back into the records we were experiencing. Uh, you're gonna notice yet again the patterns continuing. Unity gets another world record with a 22 minute 31 second speed run. Unity comes back because he was mad at Unity and said, I want Unity to do better, so he did, with a 22 minute 19 speed run. But now, now we're getting into some dicey territory. Since the competition's winding down, we're coming up on day 13. Muty actually sneaks in a world record of his own, taking it from Unity. Muty comes in with a 21 minute, 58 second speed run. Please don't fucking blow it up. No, you Okay, thank you. It's only minus four chill. Fresh meat. Come on. Timer didn't yeah. stop. That's that was 21! That was fucking 21! Let's fucking go! Let's fucking go! There's a fucking 21, dude! Finally, I get to fucking break a minute barrier, too. Oh my god. Getting close to the buzzer here, we're in the fucking fourth quarter, the final stretch, and Muty just took the world record. So, Unity may have started sweating a little bit, but not that much, because he came back and still got another world record with 21 minutes, 27 seconds. This game's similar to Crisis, yeah, you could say that. It's a real gem from its era. I was fucking scared that I literally wouldn't make it in time for the elevator then. And then we started seeing yet another new piece of tech being used called Corp Launch. You can launch your corpse into the next cutscene and load your last checkpoint, which has a car sitting in it to reset the state similar to a wormhole, which teleports you forward and skips a walking section which saves around 20 seconds. Yet another 20 second time save is still being discovered and used towards the end of these runs, and it does make all the difference in the world. To do the corpse launch you need an assault rifle, so it's a little slower than the 20 seconds, but even still, it's another time save that starts getting used. Unity comes back again. He gets a 21 minute, 12 second run. That's not a gold, but GG. Fuck. 
Oh, <laughs> I want the fucking sub 21, man. And then we get our final world record. Our very first sub 21, Unity gets an absolutely historic 20 minute, 58 second run that combines everything ever. Everything the community had learned over the course of 14 excruciating days of discovery and trials and tribulations, Unity combines into a masterpiece of a run. So now, taking a look at the final three. The final three that will be getting $10,000 split amongst them, 6,000 to first place, 2.5K to second, and 1.5K to third. Unity with his 20 minute, 58 second run. Muty coming in second with a 21 minute, 15 second run. And I think it's worth mentioning, he had an absolutely banger run right towards the end of this challenge that I was watching live where he almost had a chance of taking world record at the end. So this really did come down to the wire, but Muty gets second place, not far behind with that 21 minute, 15 second run. And then third place, we have our first repeat top three uh, performer, with Zach777 getting a 21 minute, 34 second run. Zach got second in Amok, now third in Exodus from the Earth. Who knows, maybe he's destined for first in the next one, but Zach, very consistent, great runner, gets third place. And I did mention that this time around I was doing an additional thousand dollars to whoever found the most meta-defining trick. The trick that saves the most time and is the most important to the run which the community of course has a strong say in. And the winner of that thousand dollars goes to OnTrigger for putting everything together to create and optimize chapter 13 skip to make all of that work. So OnTrigger is the recipient of the thousand dollar bonus there. And another thing I'd like to mention is there's another runner I haven't talked about, but was a huge runner in this category, Kissimov. Hope I'm not fucking up their name. I don't know if it's Kissimov, Kissimov. Uh, I, I hope I'm not butchering it. But Kisimov had an incredible run, just like Muti did, right at the end of the competition. On day 14, with only, I think, like 20 minutes left, Kisimov was on an absolutely outrageous pace. But unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be. Kisimov finished the competition in fourth, just barely. But right after the competition ended, Kisimov got first place and is right now the current world record holder for Exodus from the Earth. But it, that was in overtime. That that was that was post game. That was the end credits epilogue scene right there. So wasn't enough to get the prize placing, but I do want to shout them out because they're an extraordinary runner who is now the world record holder for this game. Overall. This competition was amazing. This was one of the most fun speedruns I got to watch. All of the tech, 
all of the discoveries being rapidly found in the Discord server every single day, everyone working together to optimize and improve and push it to its absolute limits, I couldn't be more satisfied with how this worked, and I'm extremely excited for the next $10,000 speedrun challenge. I haven't fully decided on what that next game's going to be, but I will announce it shortly once this video goes up. I really appreciate all the runners for putting so much time into this, and it was a lot of fun to watch. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope to see a lot of more repeat return runners for the next one that we do. And uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.